Thank you to my patrons for voting for this subject. If you'd like to vote on future video subjects, as well as get early access to videos, you can for $1 per creation. You can also get early access to videos on YouTube membership for 99 pence per month. Soyuz has become almost a household name after the ending of the Space Shuttle project, as both Astro and Cosmonauts have travelled aboard the craft. The Soyuz program and its many variants have seen operational use over 50 years. However, its first manned flight would end in disaster. Now this is a little different from my usual videos, but the subject is interesting nonetheless. The space race and the arms race were intertwined, especially in rocket development, as if you can get a payload into space and back efficiently, then you can also use it for a nuclear bomb. Hence why during the 20th century almost endless amounts of money was dumped into the exploration of space. The Soyuz program was the third Soviet manned flight system after the Vostok, which took Yuri Gagarin into space in 1961, and the Vosthod program, which had the first multiple manned crew and first spacewalk. The Soyuz system used two parts, the rocket known as the launch vehicle and the spacecraft which included the re-entry vehicle. The rocket consisted of three stages. The first was four identical conical liquid booster rockets attached to the second stage. The first stage provided the main thrust in the first two minutes of flight and was subsequently jettisoned. The second stage consisted of one motor with four combustion chambers and tapered towards the bottom to allow the stage one rockets to attach. The second stage took care of the next 168 seconds. The third and final stage also contained a motor and carried on the rocket's upward trajectory after all the other stages had been jettisoned. The first two stages would burn for around five minutes and would consume 225,000 kilograms of kerosene and liquid oxygen. When the last 22 tonnes of fuel were burnt off, and after 8 minutes and 40 seconds, the Soyuz would reach low level orbit around the Earth. This leads us to the spacecraft part of the program. The Soyuz spacecraft used for the International Space Station today is an evolution. Its beginnings went back to the early 1960s with the first generation Soyuz 7K OK. It was intended to form the backbone of the Soviet lunar exploration mission. The first test flight took place on the 28th of November 1966 during the Cosmos 133 mission. The mission was intended to test out automated docking of a second Soyuz launched a day later. However, problems with the second vehicle ruined the planned objective. The abandoning of the second launch required the first Soyuz to be manoeuvred for re-entry. However, issues with the onboard systems led to an incorrect burn. This meant landing being predicted in China. Not wanting the craft to land in non-Russian hands, Control sent a self-destruct command. The next test flight of the Soyuz didn't go much better either. After technical problems of its first mission, a new launch date was set for the 14th of December 1966. An ignition failure in one of the strap-on boosters caused the triggering of a launch abort. After some workers returned to the launch pad to investigate the issue, the launch escape system activated blasting the Soyuz descent module free. The flames from the descent module ignited the first, second and third stages, destroying the entire launch vehicle and severely damaging the launch pad. The unexpected incident killed one worker. Now the third test launch, Cosmos 140, did actually take off and enter orbit as intended. The mission started on the 7th of February 1967. Upon re-entry, once again the craft experienced guidance issues. This time, however, it remained controllable until re-entry when another malfunction caused too steep a descent angle, in doing so burning a 30 centimetre hole in the heat shield. The Soyuz crashed through the ice in the aerial sea short of its intended target and had to be recovered by divers. Even though the hole in the heat shield would have meant death to anyone aboard, the test was considered enough of a success to use a living human being in the next launch. This leads us on to the Soyuz 1 mission. The plan was for the craft to launch and be followed a day later by a three-man crewed Soyuz 2. Upon meeting in orbit, two of the cosmonauts would spacewalk from Soyuz 2 to Soyuz 1. The launch date was set for the 23rd of April 1967 and would be crewed by 40-year-old Vosthod 1 veteran and lunar training group commander Vladimir Mikhailovich Komarov. The mission was set to be launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Kromov knew of the issues of the previous launches, and the Soyuz 1 would have its fair share of drama even before liftoff. 
It was reported at a time that backup pilot Yuri Gagarin was seen arguing to take Koromov's place. This has been interpreted that he wanted to save Koromov by going into Soyuz 1 instead of him, in the thought that the Soviet Union wouldn't risk losing a national hero, aka the first man in space. However, this has never been confirmed and Komarov did continue on his mission. The spacecraft was launched successfully at 3.35am Moscow time and reached the orbit needed for the mission. Almost immediately, the Soyuz spacecraft came into trouble when one of its solar panels failed to deploy, cutting the power supply in half. To add some more salt into the wound, the failed panel blocked out the sun and some of the sensors used in navigation. The lack of a working second panel also caused altitude problems due to the now asymmetry of the craft. Komarov, in a desperate attempt to right the craft, kicked on the Soyuz's wall to try and deploy the failed solar panel. The mission of Soyuz 2 was modified to repair the failed solar panel. However, this was quickly abandoned when a thunderstorm engulfed the launch pad. Mission Control told Komarov to manually stabilise the craft, however it was a waste of valuable propellant. With the battery power dwindling and almost out of control, on the 13th orbit, officials on the ground decided to abort the mission. Engineers decided that re-entry should be attempted on the 17th orbit, with the next two as backup. This window was to allow the best chance of the stricken craft to attempt re-entry before the vital batteries died. Before this could be attempted, the correct orientation of the craft had to be obtained and this would be difficult with the failing navigation system. Too shallow of an angle and the craft would bounce off the atmosphere, too steep of an angle would mean burn up. To achieve this, the craft had several systems. The first was the Astro Inertial System which had been rendered useless by the failed solar panel. The next system was the Ionic Sensor which had not been the most reliable system with Komarov reporting problems with it on the 13th orbit. The last usable way of orientating the craft was via manual control. However, Komarov struggled to keep the craft in the correct orientation due to the asymmetry caused by the solar panel issues. Eventually the craft managed to be manhandled to attempt a re-entry burn. During the burn, the faulty altitude control system allowed the vehicle to drift too far off the allowed path, in turn causing the automatic system to halt retrofire. The order to try and initiate another re-entry was given and this time the engines fired for long enough to begin to enter the atmosphere. However, the craft drifted enough of course due to the asymmetric shape of the undeployed solar panel to activate the automatic shutoff once again. Although retrofire had shut off, it was enough for the desired effect. Soyuz 1 was beginning its descent. The shielded descent module which housed Komarov successfully detached from the orbital and instrument modules. For a safe landing, Soyuz needed to deploy a drogue parachute and a main parachute. The first successfully deployed, however due to a failed pressure sensor, the main chute did not. Komarov then manually deployed the reserve chute, however in a cruel continuation of the mission's bad luck, the reserve chute got tangled with the drogue chute. The speed of the descent module was not slowed enough and it slammed into the ground in Orenburg a blast. The speed was predicted to be around 89 miles per hour. A rescue helicopter spotted the descent module on its side with the failed parachute spread across the ground and landed to try and mount a rescue effort. The solid fuel rockets at the bottom of the module had become crushed in the impact and fired engulfing the craft in flames, leaving a gruesome scene of mangled metal. More rescuers arrived at the crash scene and attempted to fight the fire with extinguishers. Tragically, Komarov didn't survive the impact and resulting flames. After extinguishing the fire, the rescuers were able to dig through the crumpled wreck of the re-entry vehicle to find Komarov's remains strapped to his seat. Komarov's body was reduced to a pile of charred clothing and flesh, as seen in this picture. It was a pretty grim outcome for a brave man indeed. The only recognisable part of his body was of a heel bone. Field doctors declared the cause of the death as multiple blunt force injuries. Findings of the cause of death were confirmed in a Moscow official autopsy. The route to disaster could be placed squarely at the political ambitions of beating the USA to the moon. However, in a turn of irony, the failed mission would in part scupper the USSR's lunar project. The launch of Soyuz 2 and Soyuz 3 was delayed until October 1968. The mission didn't end in tragedy and the two Soyuz craft made the planned rendezvous, but the planned docking didn't take place. Docking in space, which was the original goal of Soyuz 1, wouldn't be completed until Soyuz 4 and 5. Improvements, however, were made in the 18-month hiatus of the Soyuz project for a while. That was until Soyuz 11, when a malfunction on a Soyuz 7K OKS caused death by asphyxiation of the three cosmonauts aboard in 1971. 
Soyuz was the USSR's first public disaster in its space program and it made its mark on the whole Russian space industry. Soyuz would improve to become the world's longest running space program, successfully becoming one of the most reliable and safest human transport spacecraft. Komarov was a named hero of the Soviet Union for a second time. He was given a state funeral and his remains were buried in the Kremlin walled necropolis at Red Square, Moscow. Komarov's name did make its way to the moon with the fallen astronaut aluminium sculpture and plaque. It was commissioned by the crew of Apollo 15 and placed on the moon on August 1st, 1971. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to support the channel financially, you can from $1 per creation on Patreon or for 99 pence per month on YouTube. I have merch if you fancy my face on a t-shirt and I also have Twitter and all that's left to say is thank you for watching.